Right, hello everyone. Um, I'm assuming you can all hear me. Yeah. Yep. Fine. Good. <laughs> and uh, I think, yeah, it looks like we've got a few people have joined the session. Um, great. So welcome to the uh, improving population health theme session. Now, this is all slightly new technology to all of us, and there uh, seem to be a few teething problems. So I hope everything goes according to plan. Um, so I'm going to start off with a bit of an introduction. I'm going to try and give a bit of a, um, try and share my screen and go, and go through a bit of an outline of some of the things that we've been doing in the Improving Population Health theme. Uh, and then we have a few sort of breakout sessions, uh, which I think you've already been allocated to. And uh, let me just try and share my screen first off. Right, hopefully you can all see the, the slides on the screen now. Um, yeah, we can see it. Great. Thanks, Andy. It's not right, in presentation so mode, though. It's not in presentation mode. Hey. No. It is on my screen. <laughs> Which one are you... Uh, are you seeing the, the uh, presenter's uh, side of it? I we just I, I see the full window band, but it's I mean it's is it okay to to yeah yeah okay so um so the the idea of the session today really is just just to uh, kind of raise awareness and share learning with members and public advisors about ongoing projects and to gain insights from you uh, about informing the development of those projects and uh, to look at, see if that, that spurs any ideas about sharing practice, uh, identifying new projects, uh, expanding some of the approaches that we're doing in some parts of the art to other, other areas. So the plan for today is, um, got from now till 10.35, I think, uh, is just a bit of a, a, a welcome and introductions from me, so that's welcome, uh, and uh, uh, a little bit from me about what the uh, um, the projects that, we, that we've been involved in in the improving population health theme and some of the progress on those projects. And then there are three breakout sessions uh, where we can dive into a bit more detail on some of those projects and hopefully get some more feedback uh, from you. So we have a session on the ways to well-being uh, project, uh, which we're going to hear. We'll I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute, uh, and that is going to be led by Roberta uh, with uh, from our team at the university uh, with Claire Marnie from um, Liverpool CCG and Debbie Nolan from Citizens Advice Liverpool uh, and Lauren from from the University of Liverpool. Uh, there's also a session on the geography of mental health. Uh, that uh, Costa Staris is going to be leading with Sean, uh, and a session on uh, resource allocation. So how we how we allocate resources locally uh, to better address health inequalities. It will be led by me with Andy and uh, uh, Andy Pennington and Louis Philippe. Andy from the University of Liverpool and Louis from uh, Lancaster University. So unfortunately, you. I think you've all been allocated to those rooms. There wasn't the option to kind of give you a choice to move between the rooms. Um, so hopefully you're okay with uh, what you've been allocated to. Uh, and then we'll come back together for some feedback uh, from those from those sessions and uh, uh, wrap up the discussion. 
So just just a reminder about what the improving population health theme uh, is about. Um, our aims of the theme are to, to expand effective local public health action on the determinants of health and health inequalities and build capacity for rapid evaluation uh, of a, that public health action and translation of that into evidence. And the... Ben? Yep. I think your slides are stuck, or at least with what we're looking at is we are still on the... Um, the very first slide. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, more, uh, some more teething problems with the uh, with the technology. I don't know why that is. Uh, let me try. I think if you stop sharing your screen and then share only share your screen when after you've. If you share your screen and then launch into presentation mode, that might do it. Yeah, that's that's what I did the first time. But I'll. All oh, right. Uh, well, initially I was just I just was sharing the PowerPoint slides rather than the screen. But I'll try. I'll see if it works better sharing the whole screen. So hopefully you should be able to see my screen now. I can't really exactly see what you can see. So it's a bit tricky to. Yeah, we can see we can see your actual screen. That ah, that's a bit better. That's bigger. That's it. Someone that looks like it. Yay! Right. Moving on. Now. Yes. <laughs> okay. Make sure I don't run out of time before I get cut out. Anyway, uh, so anyway, those were the slides that you should have seen when I was talking about them. Uh, and that is the, the, the program for the day. Uh, and those are the aims for the session. And I was just going to talk. So, so what, what we're utilizing in that uh, evaluation in developing these, these local evaluations of public health action are a couple of sort of data resources. Uh, one that, that Mark has already mentioned. Uh, so that's the place-based longitudinal data resource that, that we developed in the in the Clark. Uh, and you, you've got the website there, you can go on there, and we've brought together lots of data sets at small geographical areas over time uh, that we use in some of these uh, evaluations. Uh, and we're also working particularly with Liverpool CCG um, in developing the use of their uh, linked population health data sets. So they've got data sets from health and social care, uh, uh, from both sort of primary and secondary health care uh, that are all linked up together. And we use anonymized versions of that data uh, to, to help evaluate what works uh, within the local system. Okay, so we've got sort of eight ongoing projects uh, that are part so ongoing evaluation and implementation projects that are part of the uh, of the theme. I'll just give you a little bit of a um, an outline of, of where we're up to on those. So, firstly, looking at evaluating air quality improvement actions across the northwest coast. We've done some work mapping uh, what's being done in terms of improving air quality in the recent in recent years across the northwest coast, uh, and have been looking at evaluating. Uh, the impact of that on, uh, in particular, hospital admissions and, and prescribing for, for respiratory conditions, showing that uh, there's been some, some impact of, of some of the air quality management areas do seem to have, a, have had a positive impact on uh, health care use for respiratory conditions. Uh, and um, we're looking at how, how we can learn from that in terms of expanding some of those some of that positive work across other parts of the country. So the second project, the Ways to Wellbeing project, which we're going to hear a bit more about in one of the sessions. This is uh, providing access to um, welfare advice and, and advice on debt through citizens advice to people going through health care services, both in primary care, but now we're rolling that out into perinatal services providing a, a package of support, particularly focused on addressing uh, poverty 
uh, through the through the health services. We have a project looking at the impact of economic strategies. We know the economy uh, has a great one of the things that has one of the greatest impacts on people's health. So we're working. We've got a project with Preston uh, looking at their economic development plans uh, to evaluate what effect they're having on uh, health and well-being. Uh, and we have a project just starting with Liverpool City Region uh, to help them develop their economic plans so that they better address uh, inequalities. We have work that is focused on on the uh, response to COVID-19, in, partic in particular, as Mark mentioned, um, developing indicators to identify areas that are particularly at risk and uh, helping local government and, and other local systems uh, in using that to, uh, to target their response to the pandemic. The fifth project there, looking at the resource, how resources are allocated uh, to local areas. So that's a project working with Mersey Care uh, to look at, at what are the best ways to, uh, to determine what staffing levels should be in different neighborhoods to better address levels of need. Uh, and that's also going to feature in one of our breakout rooms, uh, looking at, at how we decide on how much resource should go to to each neighbourhood to, to, to best match the levels of need in those places. And then uh, we the sixth project there is evalu an evaluation of a physical activity uh, intervention in uh, Pennine, Lancashire, so across a number of Lancashire local authorities, uh, which um, work is, is going to be starting on that shortly. It's been slightly delayed by the, by the pandemic. The Rapid Intervention Causal Evaluation Project is working with Liverpool CCG's um, linked data sets and helping them develop methods for uh, evaluating what works and what doesn't. We just completed an evaluation as part of that project of their integrated care teams. So this is uh, multidisciplinary teams that are um, aiming to support people who are particularly at risk of hospital admission. Um, and so we've completed an evaluation of that, which should be um, published shortly. Uh, and as part of that project, we're also now looking at the impact um, of the shielding program uh, within, the, um, within the pandemic and the impact of that on, on health outcomes and mental health in particular. And the final project is, is a an evaluation of uh, a self-harm intervention in uh, that's been introduced into into hospitals in in the Liverpool region. So that's just an example of some of the projects that we're working on so far. And then within the uh, the sessions, mm -hmm. we're going to we're going to to um, uh, delve deeper into three of those projects and hopefully get some insights from you uh, into how we develop them and potentially expand them into, into other areas of the country, of, of, the, of the Northwest Coast uh, uh, region. So that's the end of the introduction. Uh, if anyone's got any quick questions before, we've got five minutes um before going into the next session uh, happy to answer them or if not then uh, we'll we'll move into the breakout sessions i should find the web page again oh, here it is. ben yeah Saika. could i just please quickly ask you which three main projects you are working in deeply I know one is ways to well-being and air quality, and which one is the third one, please? So we've got the ways to well-being project, uh, yeah. and then um, we have a project. So then the other project is is delving into some of the data that uh, that we've put together as part of the PLDR. So it's called the, yeah. the, the geography of mental health. Uh, yeah. Um, and then the third project is. Uh, is this project looking at resource allocation, um, looking at how we how we decide on on how much 
uh, NHS money should go to different areas. Uh, Thank you. So that's, that's the three the three projects. Uh, yeah, that, that will start at in four minutes time, I believe. Okay. Thanks. Great. Well, thanks very much to everyone. Any other? Oh, there's. Can't see anything in the chat, but um, yeah. Any other? Any other questions before? Before we go into the other, the next session, I think. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Just, just finding the the chat function. Good. Well, thank you, everyone, for uh, for coming to this session, and uh, hopefully, we'll see you shortly in one of the breakout sessions. I'm back here for uh, a short discussion at the end of that. Ben, do you need? Do you know if we needed to leave this session to join the breakout room? So I think if you just click on the on the breakout room, you go you go into that session mm -hmm. uh, without leaving this. I don't think. Yeah, I'm not sure whether you need to leave this meeting or not. I don't think so. Okay. I think you might be sharing your screen still, Ben. If you yeah, click yeah. on stop, um, right now, let's stop it. There's too many things in the way. <laughs> there you go. Should be. So this session hasn't started yet. It starts in three minutes. Two minutes and eight seconds. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Hi. I, thanks for sending me the Zoom link. Oh, <laughs> don't don't move out of this of this room, please. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? I'm supposed to be here. Okay, I'll stay here. I don't know. So, so like, uh, well, well, let's see if we need to, to, to send another Zoom link. So I'll just wait. Okay. I, I don't know what was going on. No, none of us. Just. No. So, Ben, are we Can't going to do it automatically? I think you have to click on oh. your schedule to go to the next bit. So it should be on your on your schedule on the web page. Okay, on my schedule. So I, shall I go on my schedule and then yeah, press? Yeah, I think if you click on that, then you can move to the next just, just to say, sort of like, uh, if this thing disappears, sort of like, I will send you another Zoom link as soon as I find it. So just, uh, just mm -hmm. bear with me. Um, Zoom is fine, but if I have to move, I'd, I can't. I'll, yeah. Schedule. So, um, uh, but never mind. <laughs> yeah, just to sort of like, I think whether or not they have sorted and I can access it, I'll carry on trying to get on through Attendify or whatever it's called. Yeah, just, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but it's sort of like, I think we it's issue. Link anyway, I think it's... I'm really sorry. I am on my schedule, but I can't join where I need to join. What does which session does it have for you? It doesn't say at all. I it's just say I am with IP. Can, um, sorry to interrupt, but you can you can filter your schedule. So there's a there's a little blue icon that says filter in the top right um, of of the um, attendify uh, screen below your name, and you click on that, and then you select your your name. Um, it hmm? sessions that you're involved in. I don't know if you heard all that. I'm having problems with my internet connection. <laughs> yeah, we did, we did hear it. Yeah, good. Thank you. That certainly makes things simpler because there's quite a lot going on in the, on, on the um, Attendify screen. Yeah. Or, and, or, and iffy. Andy, do we need to open another Zoom? Uh, meeting then for, for, for the breakout rooms? Uh, when you go to the session, I, it, I imagine it will give you the option 
So it gives you two options. So to op open in the small window in the attendify screen, but you can also uh, open, open in Zoom. Open in Zoom. But we need... I found it better doing the... Sorry. Open by Zoom meeting. Oh, God. So I'm going to join a new Zoom meeting. Okay, Claire, I'm going to leave and join another Zoom meeting for our breakout room. And I'm going to send you another link, hopefully. Okay, uh, so I yeah. used two links and I joined this one below. Okay, send me another link and then I, I'll think. jump onto that one. I'll jump off this one and jump onto that one. Okay.
Right. Well, hi everyone. Uh, so hopefully you've all come back from your uh, previous sessions. Um, yeah, it's quite a. We've been having quite a few problems with handling the new technology. And things haven't quite worked as planned, <coughs> but you know it's a learning experience. Um, and uh, sorry, to, in our session, Nick, you got cut off just as you, just as you were finishing your, your point, um, as we were moved into into this session. Uh, so, uh, well, it'd be <laughs> it'd be really interesting for me to find out how everything, how things went uh, in the in the other sessions. Um, so maybe just a bit of a bit of feedback from any kind of key points that came out of, of the other sessions. Um, so starting with uh, Roberta, how did it go? Are you there, Roberta? Oh, let's see who's... Or well, maybe not. Anyone from, from the... Uh, Ways to Wellbeing session. Claire? Hi. Yeah, just joined. Who's that? Uh, Misha Gupta. Hi, were you, were you in the Ways to Wellbeing session? Yes, yes. Right, right. Then, uh, um, how did the session go? It was very interesting, actually. I mean, I thought um, it was it was useful for me to have the case study that they used uh, to look at um, targeting sort of uh, or understanding about health inequalities was actually around an area of interest of mine, perinatal um, perinatal period and how they can uh, access um, women in high risk, uh, socially deprived, economically deprived um, areas uh, in Liverpool. So. It was very useful to see the project that they were doing. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So I think that's been one of the, you know, that's been the, the really sort of in, innovative part of that project actually has been, because um, there's been similar projects in kind of primary care previously, kind of providing people with support through citizens' advice. Um, but this is one of the first projects I think where, where that, has really been focused on perinatal care and as we know that's that's where we can potentially have the biggest uh, impact on health inequalities is um, supporting people particularly with sort of financial and um, sort of financial advice at, at that point in the uh, in the child's life yeah it sort of uh, links in well with what we're doing around the first thousand days um, you, you know, looking at how we can enhance, uh, um, obviously, that, in, that critical period preconception, but obviously from uh, conception to the first two years of life. And I think so, especially with the impact that we're going to see of COVID with uh, mental health problems and financial difficulties, it's quite a timely project really to see uh, how that's going to influence uh, infants in the next couple of years. Yeah, yeah, and no, I think that's that. that. I mean, it's a time when well, both you know, the economic effects are potentially severe, but also the whole sort of welfare system is changing. But it was changing before the pandemic, and, and it's also been changed as part of the kind of response. So it's even harder for people to navigate some of that. Um, so I think that's really that's really interesting. And then uh, from um, group two, Costas, are you there? 
Uh, can you hear me? Ah, yes, you are there. Phew. Okay. No, yeah, good. I'm here. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, the geography of mental health uh, breakout uh, went really uh, well. Uh, we didn't have any issues uh, in general. Maybe because we were very, we went very basic, like uh, presentation uh, and a little bit of a discussion, and uh, that uh, went really nice. Um, so we had a presentation about um, our latest uh, small area uh, mental health index. Uh, I've, uh, I gave some uh, really uh, nice uh, maps that um, uh, on the mental health uh, index uh, that are available in uh, the CatoDB. Uh, platform and um, uh, anything, any feedback from uh, from people in your session about uh, how that could be used? Or any any thoughts on that? Uh, we have some uh, interesting uh, comments on uh, on the index and uh, discussion about uh, why some areas they have um, uh, appear to have a, a higher uh, a level of uh, mental health, or for example, why. Uh, so, or some hidden patterns, uh, for example, in London, where if when you look at it at the national level, you cannot see in the map, uh, you know, these patterns. While when you zoom in, then you can see that there are some pockets of uh, uh, areas with poor mental health uh, uh, in London as well. Um, so it was much more like an exploratory uh, discussion about the index, and we also talk about the importance of the of having um, indicators that they are having um, a longitudinal information so they have they can be able to uh, give us information over time and uh, can track changes over time and this is uh, what we talk about it was about the pldr and the importance of pldr on providing these uh, data sources right okay any any other um, feedback that people had on on the geography of mental health session. Uh, hello, uh, we're Hi, here from Western Berlin. <laughs> okay. I was you, but, uh, Sorry? I was looking for, for you, but you weren't there. <laughs> yeah, and it's sort of like, that's why I sort of like, I muted myself because I we joined. We were a little bit, um, we took a little bit uh, more than, uh, anticipated and we had a very adventurous session and um but it worked fine um so we had to we already had some feedback from someone else who was in your uh, Rita who was in your session so i think all oh, right so so i don't need to say anything <laughs> well we're gonna run out of time otherwise we'll be cut out <laughs> um so i was just just gonna so in the the um the session that we had on um uh, resource allocation, this resource allocation project that we have. Um, we also had a few technical problems, um, but we had a, a, an interesting discussion, I think, uh, particularly at the end, uh, there's, there's a really good point as to yeah, how, if we, if we have a situation where waiting times uh, uh, for a service are particularly high <clears throat> in, a, in one area, should we prioritize um, allocating resources to get those waiting times down, even if it meant, even if it might mean uh, higher health inequality, and that's one of the sort of dilemmas in developing these these formula uh, is uh, with what weight we give to, to, to people's access to services compared to uh, differences in, in outcomes in services. And those two things are not always. Um, so I thought that that was a really interesting uh, insight, and that yeah, even even in more wealthy areas, uh, if you've got really long waiting times for a service, <coughs> um, even if the overall levels of health outcomes might be relatively good, uh, that is going to still have a particular, particularly detrimental uh, effect on on people who are um, trying to access those services with a particular health condition. Did anyone else have any anything else they wanted to, to feedback on, on that session? I, I, I want 
actual calculation able to, uh, to if you want. So I don't know whether you can comment on that. Sorry, Andy, I couldn't really hear all of that. But, um... Um, I, I, I wonder if the, if the nuance. Yeah, unfortunately, you're breaking up. I can't quite get it all. Um... I, I'll put it in the chat. Yeah. Anyone else have any uh, any, any uh, thoughts on that? Um, <coughs> Roberta, did you want to say anything else about your your session? Uh, since you didn't get much, you didn't get a chance at the beginning. Uh, I don't <laughs> I don't know what was the feedback. Uh, but, uh... I mean, really, this was a really interesting, um, particularly the perinatal uh, um, element of that and how it fits in with the wider strategy of the first thousand days. So it's sort of like so we have discussed about the components. It's sort of like a through uh, uh, from an interactive whiteboard exercise. We discussed about the components of uh, what it were enablers and barriers, uh, mechanisms, suggestion about mechanisms and outcomes that we should take into consideration. I think the. I think the vast majority of people for the mechanisms that we had identified already were sort of like they agreed with them. We didn't really uh, want to add more than that. But it's sort of like a, I feel there were a lot of uh, suggestions about the sort of uh, components, sort of like that we should uh, look at, um, take into consideration. Uh, different experiences and uh, sort of I think one of the most important highlighted barriers that we should look at barriers to the uh, working of this intervention is to uh, sort of like uh, have a look at the, um, the level of trust that there is in the services the, the level of personal relationships already available uh, in the system the sort of like between the um, the workers and the people that may be referred because there may be sort of like um, a lot of cultural resistance to sort of like yeah. to do yeah. this. I think that that is probably quite an uh, that's a, a really important point across a number of these services that you know one of the things that's been found in previous research is the the trust and relationship between the people providing the service and the clients is kind of the, an essential component for an effective service and that's also an important issue with you know, in improving access to, to services as well as not just having <clears throat> the right number of people and resources in a place but also uh, having um, having those services provided in a way that means that they're trusted by by the local community so I think we're, we're just about at the end of our session so I'd like to thank you all for, for joining and apologies for some of the glitches in the, in the IT. Um, but hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into some of the projects that, uh, that, we've, that we've got. And, um, and if, if, it, if, if it sparks any ideas about how some of those things could be uh, developed in your area or um, or could, learning from those things could be could be shared, or you want to get involved in those projects, uh, please contact us, and Sean can post a, uh, a contact email in the chat. So, thank you very much, and hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.